Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencasts. We're working now on Problem 6, just the intro portion of Problem 6, and it's got a pretty long intro, so this will take a minute to work through. You're designing an occasionally self-adjusting binary search tree. Rather than simply being balanced, it counts the number of accesses to each key in the tree over the course of a day, and then rearranges itself overnight so that the same set of accesses would have the minimum possible total cost the next day. So each night it rearranges itself to be optimized for whatever set of accesses it saw that particular day. Specifically, we count the cost of an access to a key as the key's depth in the tree. So one access to a particular key costs as much as its depth. So the top key in the tree, the root, is at depth zero. So that's going to cost nothing, whereas this would cost one and this would cost two. OK. Given a list of keys and the number of accesses to each key, generate a binary search tree that minimizes the total cost of all accesses. So this is our goal. We are given a list of keys and the number of accesses to each key, and we generate a BST that minimizes the total cost of all the accesses. And it points out to us that that total cost is the sum over all the nodes in the tree of the product of the node's depth and its access count. The keys do have associated values, but they'll go with their keys and so are relevant to the problem. This is really common. There are values. Obviously, our user cares about the values. We don't really care about the values because it's got no effect on our algorithm. They'll just go in the same object as the key and the access count goes in. OK, so an instance of the problem might be these key count pairs. So key 1 has been accessed 10 times, key 4 has been accessed twice, key 5 has been accessed 7 times, and so on and so forth. Either of these two trees would be a solution to this problem. It's a binary search tree, but presumably one will be better than the other in terms of its overall cost. So we can look at this one and say this is level 0, level 1, level 2. So we're looking at zero cost up here, which doesn't sound very promising. We, we put as a zero cost node this thing that's only ever accessed once, which is probably inefficient. Um, so we've got a cost of 2 plus 1 from the second level, so 2 plus 1. And from the third level, we're going to have a cost of 2 times 10 plus 7 plus 2 plus 1. Uh, so 10 plus 7 is, uh, is 17, plus 2 plus 1 is 20. So that's going to be 40 plus 3, or 43 for this one. And over here, on the right, we've got a zero cost node for 7. That sounds much more useful than the other side. We've got level 1 level 2, and we also have level 3, so we've got an, a less balanced tree, but if you look at what's down at level 3, it's only got an access count of 1 anyway, so that sounds like a good idea. So here we've got 10 plus 2 at the second level. That's a more expensive second level than the other one, but presumably the third level will be cheaper. 2 times 2 plus 1 plus 1, and 3 times 1. So that's going to be 12 plus 8 plus 3, that's 23. So that right-hand one is much, much cheaper. And it says down there the cost of the left tree is this formula, which is 43. So it came out to the same thing that we got when we worked through it, while the cost of the right tree, which it says is optimal, is 23. So we're supposed to use this insight to develop a solution to the problem. Some node must be the root of the tree, and the choice of root divides the remaining problem into two separate pieces. So if we look back at our instance and we think about how that insight applies, some node in that list has to be the root of the binary search tree. And maybe it's, well, let's go with the one that turned out to be the optimal choice. Maybe it's 5. Once we've chosen 5 as the root, where does a node that's got a key like 1 have to go? Well, this is a binary search tree. So if there's a node with a key of 1, it's got to go to the left. If there's a node with a key of 4, it's got to go to the left. If there's a node with a key of 12, it's got to go to the right, and so on and so forth. So this ought to work fine. Once we choose 5 as the root, it does separate the problem into two subproblems. Is the optimal solution to each subproblem also the solution that we would use to build the optimal overall solution? And, well, to figure that out, we kind of got to figure out how the cost of the subproblem changes when we push it down from being its own tree to being a subtree of the root. 
So let's talk about that as we hit subsequent problems. I think that's a good overview right now.